that just set me on this whole process of being like, I can never work with cancer patients. It's too heavy. It's too sad to, I have to work with cancer patients. Now I did my residency. I've seen thousands of cancer patients. I've seen them live five, 10, 15 years. I've seen them die. Like I've seen everything. But what I know is that we can do so much more for our health than we're told. And we're not told a shit ton of stuff. All right, welcome back to the show. Today we have an incredible guest, an incredible friend, and an incredible human. His name is Dr. G. He's a naturopathic doctor, and I can't begin to describe how excited I am for this conversation because he is such a well-rounded individual when it comes to science, when it comes to integrative um, lifestyle practices that can help boost your immunity, boost your health, and just also spiritual as well, which is one of the reasons that him and I connected in our very first conversation um, together I remember just the depth that and the presence that he has whenever he talks and converses with you. And I'm just super excited for this conversation, man. So welcome to the show, Dr. G. Man, that was that was the best intro I've had thus far, man. And I could say likewise, uh, it's funny that people reflect our like greatness and what we're coming up and showing up in the world with. So same thing, man. Like I see the same in you and that spirituality and your presence is amazing. So I'm so happy to be part of this new reboot, man. Yes. Like, I, I'm, I'm all in, man. Let's just get into everything. Yes. Yeah. I'm, ex I'm like, I have like so many things that I want to talk about okay. with you right now, but I think the, the best place to always start is to get a little bit more context about who you are. And I like starting way at the beginning. So okay. obviously you're a naturopathic doctor. You have an amazing podcast yeah. where you share so many practical tips and tricks on how to reclaim our health and empower Mm -hmm. um, us as individuals, but also as consumers too. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, how did you get on this path? Like, how yeah. did you end up where you are? What were the catalysts in your life Shoot, that brought man. you to where you are today? That's a good question because, and I ask these, this question a lot on my show because I want to get a feel for how people like ended up showing up in the world the way they do. And interesting, what I find is that there's a common thread that something happens, whether it's suffering or whether it's a, whether it's a life change where it leads them to see what their like, sense of purpose is. And uh, same thing for me. Like um, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to be a business major. I wanted to be a businessman. So I graduated with an economics degree from Rutgers University. And as I was going towards that business world, I was like, this is so unfulfilling. I hated, I did accounting and accounting was, a, uh, and God bless all accounts, but accounting was the class that made me I was like, what am I doing? I was like, I don't even like numbers. So uh, I really tried to tap in. And then I started actually meditating right at that point and learning about meditation. And I started tapping into like what my place was in the world. You know how meditation, it just taps you into something deeper, an unknowing. And I knew the knowing was in helping people, whatever that looked like. And I had a really bad experience with uh, braces in my oral, uh, just how my teeth were ending up after brace after brace and treatment plan after treatment plan. It was just a mess. I had braces for eight years and that really messed up my confidence in high school, especially for with my smile. So I go, I'd like to work with kids and give them confidence through smile. And that was great. I, I, it was, it was really heartfelt and it brought me to the field, but not exactly the position I was supposed to be in, mm -hmm. but it brought me on the field. So I ended up going to dental school and, uh, I quickly learned to go into orthodontics, you have to be in the top 1% of your class. And I always thought I was like pretty knowledgeable and really good at undergrad. But now I was with people who were like super, super intelligent, intellectual, the best studiers around. And I was like, shit, I don't know if I'm going to go into orthodontics. Like I'm right in the middle of the pack. Like these are really, really super smart kids. Uh, but then at the same time as I was like, do I go into orthodontics? Should I just be a general dentist? My mom got diagnosed with cancer. And it was I, I'll, I'll never forget the day I was on a party bus with all of my dental friends going into like a Halloween party. And I was dressed up as like a 90s hip hopper. I looked like LL Cool J from the 90s. I had a big gold chain. And for some reason, like I finally got a hold of my dad. He wasn't answering me. And he's like, look, listen, we have to talk about your mom. She's really sick. I was like, what the hell? Like, I, it just like the feeling, because it was already freezing in Minnesota, the feeling to feel like 
that burden to anyone who's listening or viewing um, who has learned that their loved one has cancer. It, it's indescribable. You're like, oh God, what's going to happen? So I flew back and then seeing that process was, was shocking to me. Seeing the process of the way the medical system handles cancer. Now, it's not to throw shade fully on everything because it's really powerful what chemo, radiation, and surgery can do. I've seen it save lives, but it's only half the, half the work. And I was particularly put off when I asked the oncologist and the nutritionist about what she should eat because she was losing a lot of weight and they're calorically dense foods. And you and I are in nutrition and we, we know like what calorically dense foods look like from a healthy standpoint. But from that world, that was really two totally different, things. Too, totally yeah. different, right? They were looking just macronutrients. Are you getting enough calories and protein? Uh, and for me, I'm like, what about quality? The, what you're giving my mom is boosted and sure. And she's supposed to go home with these super sugary drinks, 30, 40 grams of sugar, really highly processed ingredients. I knew it was inflammatory because at the time, believe it or not, Nima, I was also into bodybuilding too. I didn't build it enough, but still I knew about like working out and I knew about nutrition and I knew about it enough that I knew that this is not quality. And then, and then to hear no, she, she, she can eat cakes, cookies, whatever she wants. Just get those calories. And I was like, what is happening? And is this the world that cancer patients are going through? That completely changed my perspective. Talk about synchronicity, perfect timing. I was going back to school for the third semester, I believe. And my mom gave me a book called, I think it was a Martha's Vineyard Diet or something. Someone gave it to her and she wanted me to read it. So I read it on the plane. But I saw the author said had ND designation. And I was thinking to myself, how foolish these editors can be. It's supposed to be MD. How can you make such a big mistake? It's in giant letters in the front. And then I read her bio and I go, what is going on? What the hell is a naturopathic doctor? So I, draw, I, I touched down and at the time I didn't have cell phone on my phone. I mean, uh, internet on my phone. So I rushed home and I looked on the internet and I researched it. And man, it was so powerful, the feeling of knowing. It was a snap of a finger. I was Looked like I, it felt like I took three shots of tequila. I was so buzzed and high and my body was activated and charged. It was talking to me that I got actually the word intuition tattooed on my wrist like two weeks later, because in that moment I knew I needed to go to that world. I knew I was in the field, but that was telling me the position that I needed to play. I said, I got to get out of here. I left a semester later. I took a semester off and then the next semester in the, in the fall, I started in school again. And it was a naturopathic doctor. My mom died in the first year of school. But man, like seeing that whole process and like what the energy, transmuting the energy of a death into like rocket fuel, that just set me on this whole process of being like, I can never work with cancer patients. It's too heavy. It's too sad to, I have to work with cancer patients. Now I did my residency. I've seen thousands of cancer patients. I've seen them live five, 10, 15 years. I've seen them die. Like I've seen everything. But what I know is that we can do so much more for our health than we're told. And we're not told a shit ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that sort of led me to this going into patient care, learning more about cancer, taking those pieces of what causes cancer, talking about those pieces of what we can do to empower ourselves, moving out of patient care, and then coming to a platform where I can talk to not, you know, three, five people a day, but I can talk to thousands a day, mm -hmm. which is so much more rewarding for me. And I will say that point about talents, like, we are gifted, all of us are talents, you know? Some people are, I, I was not the best researcher. I hated reading and reading and reading, but I had classmates who were like, I love research. I'm like, yes, let's work together because I can talk about that research to people, you know? So I realized those talents of mine were better for this, were better for teaching um, rather than just sitting all day. And, you know, that, that's, that, there's utility in that for other doctors, but for me, I, I love what I'm doing. And that's sort of how we, we led to this moment where I'm sitting with you. That's incredible, man. What an incredible story. Thank you for sharing too, especially um, the part about your mother really hit mm -hmm. me when you were talking about it. Just like what a beautiful gift mm -hmm. for her to give you mm -hmm. so that you can show up in the world the way that you do through her pain and her struggle and you witnessing that. Yeah. You wanted to take that and heal other people, strangers, complete strangers. Um, I find so much beauty in that. So beautiful, man. And it's crazy. Um, I, I was in San Francisco and I was living there in 2017. This medium came up to me, and at the time, man, I was most skeptical. I, I was skeptical about all things in school, even like homeopathy, which is actually can work for, I've seen it work incredibly for people. There's hardly any science in that. I totally brushed it off until I seen it work on a kid incredibly, and I was like, okay, there's something here. This medium comes up to me in a, a, of like a health food store, 
And she goes, hi. I go, hi. And, you know, she, she, she just, I was kind of put off because I was like, she kind of like invaded the space and came in really quick. I was like, what the, what is going on? And she's like, I have to tell you something, but I need permission to tell you something. I'm a medium. I was like, okay. And then she's like, your mom has a message for you. I go, how do, how do you know about my mom? And she's like, she wants to tell you that where you're going in life, she had to pass away, pass away. What you're doing in this world and what you're going to do, she had to die. And I, I got, I started crying in front of her. How the, how can you not? Who's a stranger? She knows nothing about me. She never met me. At the time, I didn't even have the Instagram, so I wasn't public about this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you saying that, yes, that's the beauty in it. And I, I fully believe that. And every word you say about that, I'm behind because that's my experience. Wow. I got chills, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, that, right? That's, that's, that's such a beautiful like transition from something that you thought you wanted to do, which I've, I've been there. You know my story. I was yes. just on your podcast. We shared my background in pursuing a career that I thought was going to stimulate me and didn't realize that it was, yes, intellectual, intellectually stimulating, um, pursuing engineering, but in no moment when I was studying or researching or working for that matter, did I ever feel that sense of excitement, right. that sense of fulfillment, that sense of like excited to start my day and feeling that purposeful mission yeah. behind what I was doing. So I love hearing your story about, you know, going into dental school and then finding your path and finding your purpose. And I wish that more people would explore that because it's not often that we are asked or presented an opportunity. Yeah, maybe whenever we're in school, we're asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? But mm -hmm. I think the metrics in which people define like success, you know, it's very little, um, it's very not often talked about, like, what about the fulfillment? Like, does it excite you in a way that really excites you? Not the thought of having money, you know, or means to an end to, so you can do things that are exciting, right. but like, does the work itself excite you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's exactly what I thought about when I was, I mean, it was a bold move to be $50,000 in debt already from school for one year, probably a little more and going like to the Dean, I'm out. Like this is done. I can't, I, this is not my route anymore, but I'm a firm believer that if you listen to your intuition, whatever you want, even if it's, even if it is purely financial, you, you will go there if you listen to your intuition. Your intuition is always leading you like a compass mm -hmm. to exactly what you're calling for, right? And, and I'm a, I believe so much that whether it's quote unquote good or bad, it's what you're calling for. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try to bring awareness to people. It's like, what message are you putting out? What's a thought in your head? What words are you saying, right? What are you saying to yourself? Are you taking time to like be clear on your vision? I know you wake up at 6 a.m. and do journaling and meditation and visualization. Like that's someone who's clearing their vision every single day and defining it over and over and over. So it's solid as gold. Mm -hmm. And because you're so strong in your vision, anytime something presents that is not aligned with it, even if you're like, Oh wow, that would have been a great payday. It, there's, there's nothing because you, you have the faith that everything else you ever wanted is on the other side of that. No, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and yeah, that's like what I try to submit to people that we can do that. Mm -hmm. So as, as a, as a, you know, naturopathic doctor, like you've had your own journey with your own health, right? So were you always interested in, in health or has it been so, sort of an evolution? The more you learned, the more you started implementing and the more you started practicing and mm -hmm. embodying it. Because I've seen many doctors before that don't look like they even take care of themselves. Right. And it's very hard to accept advice from somebody that, um, you know, not, not judging them based off their appearance, but more so their, their actions right. and how they move through this world. So have you always been focused in, in, prioritized your health? Yeah. So, uh, that's embodiment, right? Are they embodying like what, what they preach and that energy is what we uh, resonate with. That's how we listen, right? We listen with our feelings, not with our ears. Like we know we, there's a knowing. So, um, I was up until like right into college, I had a friend who was like really into lifting and he lived right across from me. His name was Jimmy and him and I, he got me into working out. I didn't, I used to kind of work out for football in high school, but like we got into like really working out, which is when I started like thinking I was a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but I started going like bodybuilding.com, bodybuilding.com. Exactly. Yeah, I had, <laughs> man, you should have seen my, my college dorm room look like GNC on steroids. I had, I had the worst quality, like multivitamin, but I had a, like a five pound tub of like whey and yeah, my stomach was killing me, but you know, I, I gained some good mass and I was like, whoa, this is, and you're in college. You're like, you know, I want to look good. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't know, I knew about macronutrients through college undergrad and I would always track that my protein. I would write it down every day at the end of the day. 
carbs, all of, and then I add it up and see that I'm consistent and I need to eat more, I need to eat less. Um, and then when, right around when my mom got sick, I started learning more about quality. So for me, calorie was calorie, right? But for me, there was now quality behind the calorie, right? Is it also giving me density of nutrients that is doing my body good, right? So not only am I getting more calories for me trying to gain weight, but I'm also getting good nutritious calories. So then I went into the micronutrients and learning about that. And that was really through medical school more. Mm -hmm. And then when I understood, started understanding more about our environment around us, which is so important for our health, that was after my residency, after cancer, uh, my cancer patients, I would, I had a practice in San Francisco or right outside of it. And I started learning that our environment plays such a role, not only, not only the environment like, oh, you know, I'm using this bleach or cleaning product and it's toxic but also our community. So then it started going into the mind body and then I went deeper into the mind body. Of course, I had my own practices, but now I started seeing scientifically what mind body practices, our community, our environment, how that plays into our health. So it started becoming even more holistic. Mm -hmm. So the, um, I started, and anytime I'm in it, I embody it. Like, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to talk about matcha, I'm going to drink it every single day, mm -hmm. right? But then if we find out matcha all of a sudden causes knee cancer, I'm going to be like, oh shit, I don't want matcha anymore, but let's talk about this, you know? So everything that I try to do, I try to embody that as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love the fact that you brought up um, our environmental factors because that's, su that's such an often overlooked uh, aspect of our health and how it affects us and contributes to our mm -hmm. health. So can you give us some of the, I don't know if you have like a top five yes. um, environmental considerations yeah. that may be affecting your health negatively and what are some practical things that we can do to um, remove them or replace them or make shifts towards creating a healthy environment mm -hmm. because a lot of us, especially nowadays, well, maybe the last 18 months, people have been spending a lot more time indoors, uh, a lot more times in close quarters with the people, you know, that they live around in their community. Mm -hmm. So how can we make those shifts to, to really optimize our health? Yeah, man, that, that's a great question because you're right. Everyone is indoor much more, right? 50, 60, 70% more, or they just indefinitely changed their career or they're, they're working from home now. I started really revving up the environmental medicine talk right around COVID because I knew this. And um, there's practical things that we never consider. Now, this is why we don't consider it because we're not affected by it day to day. It's not like unless you're suffering with mold toxicity and then you go to someone's house who has mold and then it gets worse, you, you'll know. But if you come to my house and I have like, you know, a, a, a Tempur-Pedic bed and it's off gassing and I have like these really cheap rugs and they're off gassing, you might smell a little bit of chemicals, but it won't bother you. Even if you stayed at my house for a week, you kind of like maybe feel something, but it takes time. That cup takes time to fill up over and over and over. It may take years for some people. And if your constitution is really strong, it may take 10 years, but all of a sudden that cup fills up, fills up, overflows, and then you're manifesting a disease. It could be cancer. It could be MS. It could be eczema, depending on your constitution and your genetics. So there's really important things we do and we have to think about air quality. We think about food quality. We think about the quality of our water. We think about the quality of our, of our lifestyle, right? But we don't think about air quality. On average, the air indoor is 10 to 100 times more toxic than the air outdoor, right? Minimum 10, 10 times more toxic than wow. and polluted. Even in like a city? Even in the city. So that's probably on the lower end, uh -huh. right? But if you're at home, all the windows closed and using all these conventional cleaning products and sprays mm -hmm. and Glade plugins your air quality is really poor. Now, as adults, our cup is a little bigger, but children and pets really suffer. So if anyone's pets are suffering from allergies or getting really sick over and over and children are getting sick over and over, they have allergies or respiratory illness or sinus infections, you got to think about the home. So here's some things you can do. Cheap. Open up your windows first and foremost. Even in the winter, find some time to let air circulate and air flow because that's the, the air pressure is going to be pushing everything outside. And that's what happens with these environmental toxins. They're volatile organic compounds, meaning they, 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 they express in the air, right? They, they just mm -hmm. gas up in the air and you move them out. You have to make sure you're consistently keeping, keeping your place clean. You have to. If you have rugs, make sure you're vacuuming them all the time. If you are accumulating dust, a lot of these compounds build up there. A lot of the mold mycotoxin build up in dust. So you got to dust your house. Make sure you're taking care of it always, especially if you have a kid who's consistently sick. Shoes off. So important. Before we walked in here, we, you have a little shoe area. Mm -hmm. that's, that's perfect because mama was right. Auntie was right. <laughs> yeah, grandma was, was right. 
your shoes need to be off. That was a mom thing. That was a mom thing. Could not come in the house with my shoes. Exactly. Off. Yeah, it stuck. <laughs> but there's actually studies out there that show that there's an increased amount of toxins coming into the home, including pesticides. Because you have to think about it. You don't need to be living in the city to be exposed to pesticides. You just need to be passing grass patches that are really nice, right? Mm -hmm. People who take care of their lawn using Roundup, that stuff run off. It runs mm -hmm. off into the ground. It runs off to the sidewalk. We step on it. Our dogs step on it. If you have a dog, make sure they clean their paws. So these are the, none of these cost money, right, mm -hmm. up to this point. Now, things you could do to change in your home. Uh, think about if, you, if you're ready to change your bed, invest in a good quality bed. And by good quality, I mean something that has a Green Guard certified label on it or GOTS, G-O-T-S, that's for the cotton or G-O-L-S, that's for latex. Those three uh, certifications for beds will, will ensure that you're getting a really high quality bed that's not off gassing. Mm -hmm. Why do I talk about bed? Because we sleep on beds six to seven mm -hmm. hours, eight hours a day, every single day for years on end. Our face is exposed. Now, something like a Tempur-Pedic is made of polyurethane. Polyurethane is notorious for off-gassing, different chemicals that affect our hormones, our immune system, um, our, our known carcinogens, right? So they're, they're, it's, think about like a little, um, you've used tinctures before, like little herbal tinctures. Mm -hmm. Think about if I put a drop every single day, but I do it for 10 years. All of a sudden, that cup that was empty is going up. Mm -hmm. Now add in crappy food, smoking, drinking, consistently stress, all of a sudden the cup becomes smaller, the water becomes higher, mm -hmm. and then it overflows at some point. So this is why we talk about these things. And think about the quality of your um, pots and pans. If you're using Teflon nonstick, major, major to throw those away. Really important, right? The chemical in that, PFAS, forever chemicals, are known to affect the thyroid, affect the nervous system, disrupt your hormones. Mm. Like that is a, there's a movie called um, Dark Waters with Mark Ruffalo. I would su highly suggest people watch it. It's fantastic about DuPont and how they use PFAS, forever chemicals, in their Teflon and how it was poisoning a small town, I believe in West Virginia. Everyone was getting cancer. Cows were dying. Animals were dying. Everyone was dying. And it was crazy. But to think about that chemical is now in our pots and pans that we use. And nonstick is easy. It's convenient, right? It's mm -hmm. nice. Lastly, your um, whatever personal care products, lipstick, shampoo, lotions, go to the Environmental Working Group Skin Deep Database, cross-reference that, see that your products that you're using aren't getting a D or an F, and look at which ones they highly recommend, which ones are devoid of those chemicals that are going to be disrupting your system. These are, aside from the bed, pretty cheap interventions. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you don't want to throw everything away, don't get overwhelmed. Just keep what you have, but as soon as it's time to change, make one change. Change your shampoo this month, maybe mm -hmm. your lipstick next month, maybe your foundation and concealer the month after that. See what I mean? Just moving slowly because it takes a while for that bucket to become full, but you can make those interventions too over time and it's really powerful stuff for your health. Wow, you, you're making me want to just like go through my house and like <laughs> take a look at every single label and even uh -huh. my bed. How do I even check to see if my bed is one of those um, suspects? We'll, we'll, look it, at, we'll look at the name of your bed uh -huh. and then we'll look on the internet and see what it's made out of. Okay. Right? And, then, okay. and then we can see. But there's so many good quality. Man, I did a bed, like a bed review, and I went over the top like five to 10 beds out there that are doing really good by us. And then the other ones that are like, uh, I wouldn't stay in that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's important. It, that's, that's such a good point too, because as like, as an adult now, I invest in, in things of quality. When I was like young and, and broke and like trying to just survive, Same. I was like, whatever the cheapest is, give it to me because it'll save me money so I can go do, you know, live my life essentially. Same. But now as an adult, I realize the importance of, like investing in high quality like bedding and even mm -hmm. like a mattress because I mean essentially we spend like a third of our life in bed and like I as a young kid I could wake up and deal with being like you know sleeping in odd positions mm -hmm. and in uncomfortable beds but now as a, like a 32 year old I'm like okay I need to invest in something to where right. I wake up feeling energized and feeling good and now I know that this well hopefully my bed is not mm -hmm. slowly you know it's toxic. For yeah, me, for well. sure. <laughs> so. Imagine imagine a headline on a, a giant news publication that says, is your bed giving you cancer? Everyone mm -hmm. would be like, what the hell is going on with beds? Mm -hmm. But essentially, like if you look at it, those chemicals are known carcinogens, right? In small doses. But many of those build up in our system. We don't just pee them out the next day, right? That's a problem. Is our, 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 is our cookware leading to cancer. It could be. Those PFAS build up in our body. They're forever chemicals. They last 18 to 22 plus years in our body. Wow. Crazy. So 
this is why I've, I've, I mean, look, chemicals are not sexy. No one wants to be like benzene, formaldehyde, Halloween. Mm -hmm. But when you think about them as a whole, it's a really important subject for people to understand. Right. And, and, you know, new builds right now, like, like it's really nice to move into a new apartment, right? New leasing just open. Wow. I'm the first one in, but that chemical smell really is going to affect you. Right. Some people have a strong constitution and it doesn't for a long time, but I don't care who you are. If you stay there for long enough and you're not doing the right things to optimize your air quality, it's going to affect you some way, somehow. It could be something as small as, you know, joint pain, muscle pain, skin conditions, or something that can be a chronic disease, Mm -hmm. right? And for people who are weaker constitutions, we need to bring awareness to this, right? If your mom has breast cancer and you're living in a home and you're not taking care of your air quality, epigenetically speaking, 10% of us only get cancer because of our parents. Mm -hmm. 90% of other, everything else is environmental. Mm -hmm. Literally like the food we eat, the what's in our home, what we're exposed to, the stress, everything. So my thing is like, how do I work with that 90%? How do I tell people, yo, you can empower yourself right now to prevent cancer? Mm-hmm. That's, that's a crazy thought, right? Because we believe that if your mom had cancer, you're going to get cancer at some point. Your dad had prostate cancer, you're going to get prostate cancer at some point. Mm-hmm. But that's not the story that we need to tell people anymore in medicine. Wow, this is, this is so fascinating. So like you, you mentioned several different topics here. So like what, if you were to say like, if you were to imagine like a pie chart, Right. And this pie chart is all about your health and like different slices of this pie is prioritizing your health or, or things that we should really give attention and awareness to. Obviously, you have things like sleep, you have uh, stress management, you have food, you have environmental talks or env- mm-hmm. environmental issues as well. And then you also have uh, genetics, which we don't really can't really choose that. But I guess we can um, do our best to mm-hmm. inhibit some of those, you know, later on metabolic diseases and things that are these other factors play yeah. a role into. So what would you say um, for somebody that is already interested in health? How should we prioritize that? I mean, obviously you have a holistic approach right. to what you do. Uh, yeah. It, and, and if I think about the pie chart, I'll talk about like the, I'll talk about, it, it depends on the person, right? Because this is actually, it's funny you say pie chart. When I used to have cancer patients, we used to do all these tests. I gathered all the information I possibly can about what I knew caused cancer. And then we, I draw a big pie chart and I draw what their pie chart looks like. And here's most likely what's driving your cancer. And here are other things that, you know, you may have been told that are the real reason, but like there's more to it. Cancer, but all other chronic disease, they're, they're multifactorial. There's different things that lead to it. But regardless, even if you don't have a chronic disease, you can still be optimizing your life through these foundational things. Now, I'm the believer, the further we are displaced from nature, the more sick we are. That's it. And we evolved with rhythms. We evolved with nature. And now people are living in high rises in the middle of New York City. No offense, but like completely detached from nature, completely detached from community. If you don't have a community, completely detached from putting their feet on the ground, right? They're the, the sig, they have their, they're on their phone. They're getting blue light. They're not getting those proper signals from the sun. So you want to talk about stuff. Sleep is massive, massive. And it's the, it's the one thing that I sacrifice for my own self. So. But for now, I've been really working to be like in bed, phone off by nine o'clock. That way, if I want to mess around, I could do whatever I want, but it's not going to be on my phone. Mm. At some point, I'm going to get bored doing whatever I want. all screens or just phone? So no TV either? All screens. Yeah, no okay. TV. Ten, nine o'clock. And then it ends up being like 10, 1030. I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> um, but so important. And But before that, I put on blue blockers as much as I can. And... Uh, they're really powerful because it's said that for every hour after sunset that you don't have, that you're exposed to blue light, you lose 20% of your melatonin. That's crazy. Three hours, you lose 60% of your melatonin. Let's say three hours on average after sunset, you get to bed, 60% of your melatonin is gone. Melatonin is one of the most important hormones you can ever secrete. It literally protects you from cancer. It stimulates your immune system. It's antioxidant. It's anti-inflammatory. So that's why getting into bed the right time so you can, right around 10 to 12, your brain is detoxing right? It's really important for you to be sharp the next day. You want to be in bed early. And, and you, I, know, I know you noticed it. Like if, anytime you get to bed late, even if you had eight or nine hours, mm-hmm. you're not as sharp the next day. That's because mm-hmm. your brain isn't doing the proper full detox the way it does if you're getting to bed early. So getting the sleep sets you up for the rest of your day. Looking at the sun, especially when you wake up, is really important to set up your cortisol. You want to spike it up in the morning so your melatonin can come up at night. They actually reflectively work together. They're antagonistic. But Seeing that sun is really important, and I would highly suggest taking some time, like rituals like you do, to put your feet on the ground 
right? And ground yourself also mentally, emotionally through journaling. This is the stress part, Mm -hmm. right? Stress, a major, major piece of that pie is stress, major. And I'm going to, I'll go into more into that in a little, but these things are foundational, right? Obviously eating good quality food, right? Whatever your diet is, make sure you're eating a ton of fruits and vegetables and they're all the different colors of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. So you're getting different antioxidants for every single class or every single color. Very important. Lifestyle, obviously, if you're drinking every day, you might want to reconsider. I did a whole show on alcohol and your relationship yeah. to alcohol. Smoking, those are all lifestyle stuff that we know, right? In cancer medicine, we know alcohol, smoking, exercise, and diet are the known factors right now in cancer. And they have different percentages of how they lend to cancer. But all the other stuff that I'm talking about is less research, but to me, as important. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all of those things. community. Having feeling like you belong to something is massive. Now, stress is important to pay attention to, right? People say stress causes cancer. Yeah, but how? So remember I talked about that cup and the cup fills up, right? Through environmental toxins. And we'd covered that, which is another piece of the pie. Through poor diet, smoking, alcohol, whatever it is, all the bad things that you hear about, fill up that cup. Stress will minimize or reduce the size of the cup. Mm-hmm. which is crazy, right? So for me, the, the, the cup is, is determinant on two things, your genetics, right? So let's say you have a really healthy family lineage and your cup is like a 16 ounce mason jar. Oh shit, but you know, Christian does everything for his health, but he has really crappy genetics. Mine might be like an eight ounce or a shot glass even, right? Mm-hmm. So my cup can just keep overflowing all the time. It's up to me to make sure I check my stress even more than you. But regardless, you still got to check your stress too. So when it comes to stress, it's not just like, shit, man, like I'm really mad at my boss, you know, or, oh man, that person cut me off. That's like day to day, some acute stresses. But there's two branches of it that I really need to talk about. There's one, the community and loneliness. The loneliness epidemic is a massive epidemic. Community is, this is crazy. I was reading this study. Community is more important than your blood lipids, smoking cessation, exercise, and there was one more indicator. But that just tells me that community is so, so, so important as a determinant of our overall health. You have to feel like you're part of something. We are evolutionarily tribal. Mm -hmm. The The way we banish people, we excommunicated them. And that's how they suffered, right? They were cut off from the tribe. But for us, man, we have to feel like not only we're part of something, but we are invigorated and alive by our community. We are inspired by the people we bring into our life. And that is when you find yourself in a place like that, then all of a sudden your boss yelling at you or someone cutting, out, cutting you off changes. Your lens changes because you, you feel like you're part of something bigger. You have a sense of purpose. That loneliness epidemic is crazy. It is, and it's worse because of COVID, especially because of the isolation of last year. But loneliness mm-hmm. is a massive epidemic. The other part of it is your own stress that you're carrying, that you're holding in, is for me, the biggest piece of the whole pie. The lack, and when, when I say the word authenticity, I want to preface it by saying what my belief is authenticity is literally just embodying your soul's, your soul in human form, right? When you're a kid, you're your most authentic you are in your life. Right, because you don't, mm-hmm. you're not scared about crying. Mm-hmm. You're not scared about yelling. You're not scared about exploring. There's no rules, really. You're just being in life. But that authenticity is everything. I am a firm believer that the more we are from removed from nature, not only like the signals of nature, the sun, the food, or our true nature. The more we remove from our true nature, the more we are susceptible to disease. So the biggest piece of that whole pie chart is: Are you in touch with your truest authenticity? And if you are not, are you identifying those adaptations that you made that are anchoring your authentic, that are anchoring you from being liberated and really feeling and being yourself in your skin and around people? Are those anchors holding you down? And what the heck are those anchors? And when you realize that those anchors are just stories that are not true anymore, they never were true. Maybe in that moment where you adapted thinking they were true, mm-hmm. but you hold them and you held them. That for me is a massive key to help, especially if anyone listening, you cannot if you're, you're trying to get better, you're going to every doctor, you're not healing, there's a deeper piece to this. And I believe so deeply that this is the piece. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, 
you couldn't have said it better. And I, I love the fact that you talk about this because this is such a often the overlooked aspect of our health. You know, it's like you can do all the right things. You know, I've 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 been there. Trust me. Like I've been in the position where I was doing everything right nutritionally. I was taking care of myself in every single way possible. I was in the best shape of my life. But I there was such a disharmony between my like physical and my emotional health. My emotionally I was I was drained. I was tapped out. And on top of that, there was all of this other uh unconscious beliefs yeah. that I had about myself that was preventing me from ever feeling great in my body. And it wasn't until I started exploring that more deeply through meditation, through journaling, through therapy, through reaching out and getting help and having somebody reflect back different perspectives and maybe allowing me to see parts of myself that I couldn't see myself um, in a vacuum mm -hmm. that allowed me to let go of some of those stories so that I could step more into my fullest expression. And I'm still in that process very yeah. much so. And it's like such a beautiful process because it's layered. And every time you think you heal something or you think you figure yourself out, there's, you can go deeper. Hundred percent. You can go deeper, and on top of that, like a lot of the the this the habits or maybe the tendencies that we gravitate towards, such as like numbing or distracting ourselves through alcohol, drinking, TV, Netflix, Cell whatever phones. it is, those are symptoms of a deeper problem that can be addressed. Uh, but it takes that tenacity to do that type of self exploration. But if you have the the willpower to 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 stay committed to that process, then you can feel like a completely different person and a lot of your other problems will tend to wash away. Yeah. I love that you said feel good in your body, which is an important thing to understand. A lot of us don't feel good in our body and it's even worse. Maybe let's say when we're in social situations, oh my God, I feel so awkward. I, I got to hold myself in. I can't, oh my God, I really want to dance. I can't dance. Oh my God. I like, mm -hmm. I would look foolish. It would look terrible. I'm not a good dancer. Like all of these talks. Now think about the way you talk to yourself is the way you talk to your body, right? Mm -hmm. And your body is like holding in. Your body wants to do everything. And by your body, I mean like your deep, deep rooted soul consciousness. It wants to express without judgment because it knows it. there's no such thing as judgment. It's in your head. Um, but feeling good in your body is such a good indicator. See how you feel in social situations. See how you feel when you're back home with your parents. See how you feel when you walk in the house with your partner, right? Mm -hmm. See how you feel when you walk into work. Life should be expansive in every single way. Life should be expressive in every single way. If we're contracting at, an, at any point in our lives, let that be an indicator that one, maybe we're not in the right place and that we're not in the right situation. But two, even if we can't remove ourselves from that situation, we can perceive ourselves differently. We can express ourselves differently, right? So if we go to that job that we hate, maybe we need to be at it for six months more, 12 months more. But I guarantee your expression right? Expansion can be so much more powerful than going in there and contracting every day. It's you. The reason my show is called Heal Thyself is because you are your own cure, mm -hmm. right? Heal thyself. That's, that is literally, can you remember, express, and embody your authenticity? That is the most powerful thing you can do in this world because you only do it, you only don't do it for yourself. You do it for your lover, right? You do it for your parents. You do it for your brother. You do it for a stranger at the supermarket. People feel that energy. They don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, when someone walks in the room, we talked about this on my show, when someone walks in, you want, you're like, I want to be around that person. Or mm -hmm. your ego says, that person, what are they doing? Look how they're dressing or look how they're talking. Mm -hmm. Like, who, who do they think they are, right? They're so confident. It's annoying. God, I wish I had what they had. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly that. But you do. And that's the heal thyself part of it. Like, your authenticity is always accessible to you today. Today. It's letting go of those stories that are holding you back, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I can give the example for me. Speaking my words of affirmation was holding me back from my authenticity. It was really hard for me to tell people I love them or I care about them or how they mean to me or how I look up to them or anything, right? It was like, oh, it went back in my body. It was up in my throat. Oh, actually, it made it to my, to my tongue. Oh, now it's going back in. Mm -hmm. It was a story of fear that I learned as a kid that I can't say that because I would be judged for it. And I don't remember the instance that it happened, but that's the feeling that I get. Um, probably in school, because I was always an open, loving kid who always spoke and appreciated things. But coming back is like invigorating and aliving me. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait a minute. I've had stomach issues since 2007. Why do I feel better? Wait, I thought I couldn't eat gluten, but why like I ate gluten and my hands didn't like outbreak or my you know, mm -hmm. body's not itching. There's such, such a deep mental, emotional part. And I, that's why I keep bringing this authenticity up. It's like, it is everything. It is everything for your physical health, mental and emotional. So you mentioned 
affirmations. So what other practices do you um, have in your self-care, your self-love practice that allows you to tap deeper into that authenticity? Mm. That's a good question, man. Um, the, the affirmations is important because the power of what affirmations do, especially if you speak them with your five, five senses, right? And that's a whole part of like being with the words of your affirmation. But the things that affirmations do is that you can create and you can construct and deconstruct how you show up in this world and everything's okay. Right. But it also shows you that you're in line with the man that you want to create me, my and the man that I want to create Christian. Right. Because the moment, like, let's say, for example, I am in integrity. It's one of them that I say, I actually say, I am knowing, I am creating, experiencing, and knowing myself as integrity. Right. I say that instead because creating means that I'm, I'm putting together that I am integrity, knowing you, I wait for that experience to happen. So when the experience shows up that I can be out of integrity, I get to choose different, that completely different, but I get to know that, wait a minute, I created this situation. I can be out of integrity, but I created now I'm going to feel what integrity feels like. Mm -hmm. And then the knowing part is changing your frequency, your vibration of what integrity is. And all of a sudden I don't need to say I'm a man of integrity anymore because I know myself as that mm -hmm. instances came up and I did the opposite. So now I know any instance I come up, it's, it's over. Like that's the power of affirmations. You get to create yourself more in line of, of your authenticity, how you want to show up. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want to show up as open and loving and expressive with my words and not fearing judgment if I tell someone I love them, right? I want to show up as intentional. How, who am I bringing into my life? Are, are they really energetically like someone I want to bring into my life? Or whoa, my energy is way more valuable than that. So that's what affirm, affirmations do. But also the journaling is really nice. I know you do that. You write mm -hmm. out unconsciously all that all the stuff that is in your head it's nice because it comes out in like a raw way so it's a great way to look at it meditation is like next level i know our friend our mutual friend andre is meditating deep every single day and you feel his energy he's got a very grounded energy but that's the power of it like you will always be grounded even when those instances that trigger you right that show you those stories that you're not letting go of mm -hmm. you'll still be grounded and you're like whoa like i still feel like I'm, I'm rooted yeah, and I'm, I'm as I'm learning, right? Like you're going through like these tidal waves, but you're still like your feet are in the ground. Those tidal waves of like, oh my God, here's a story I told myself that I should fear this. Oh my God, here's a story that I shouldn't show up like this in this world. Oh my God, like, you know, but we get these tidal waves that hit us, but that meditation is like next level consistently. Like I do it every single day. Mm -hmm. There's so much power in that. Um, those are the most important things that I found. Um, I've done other practices um, I am a big proponent of psychedelic medicine for helping people with mental illness. Um, so, uh, that's something if, if you speak to your doctor about and clinically it's indicated for you, it's expanding throughout the nation because it does have a lot of utility, especially for like PTSD mm -hmm. or depression or anxiety, man, like there's people reversing that in one, two sessions completely. People who are suicidal doing, you know, ketamine therapy is ketamine assisted therapy, reversing that completely. More powerful at this point that we're seeing in any, as, than any drug on the market, right? But safer, especially when done with a professional and more powerful. That's incredible stuff. So yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to find whatever ways can show me the shadows that I'm not. The last thing I'll say, Nima, about that is relationships. You want, you want, a, you want a, mm -hmm. every single day trigger for you or some yeah. sort of affirmation? <laughs> Talk about an accelerator for growth. Talk about accelerator for growth? Yeah. <laughs> A, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, girlfriend, boy, whatever it is, will show you your shadow very fast. And you will see how your ego shows up. Because for me, I'm like, God, my ego is super like, I can dodge like the matrix. I'm like Keanu Reeves. I'm like dodging all these things. And then I'm like using my articulation to show up and be like, I can manipulate this whole conversation. Mm -hmm. So it's so crazy because just having that awareness, you can choose differently. And then instead I can be like, let me be accountable for this because this is my fault. This is, I showed up like I don't want to and I love you. So let me show up differently. Mm. So relationships pay very close attention to those triggers because that is like your number one way. You, that's your cheat code to healing. Yeah. Yeah, that's your indicator. Your, your indicator. Your emotions, they, they are, like you said earlier, like they're GPS. They are telling you that to, to look somewhere, you know, and oftentimes there is a deeper story. It's not the thing. It's the thing underneath. The, the trigger, right? That 100%. needs to be worked through and healed. And oftentimes that's, you can probably trace it back to some kind of childhood wound 
yeah. um, that's maybe rewounding himself in a new way. And oftentimes we seek out partners and relationships that reflect those childhood wounds in new ways, but it's unconscious. So the more conscious awareness that we have and we can bring an intention that we can bring towards that self-discovery, the more authentically we can show up, the more we can realize that those stories or those lessons or those survival techniques and coping mechanisms that we learned when we were younger no longer serve us. Maybe yeah. they did at some point, but now as a, an adult or maybe later in life, those things no longer serve us. So how yeah. can we let go of those things? Yeah, exactly. One fascinating thing we never think about is there's a body intelligence that knows how to heal a wound, right? We slip off of a bike like I did so much because I was uncoordinated as a kid, cut my body. But every single time I would look at it and I go, ah, it's a scab now. But you never really think about the whole process that happens. And you learn a little bit about in school. You can look it up, what happens when you're, well, there's wound healing. Pretty fascinating process. But there's, even at that, it, there's an intelligence that's driving it. There's an intelligence that goes, okay, go from step one to step two to step three. We don't, we, so we look at our physical body always trying to heal, but we don't really put together that our mental, emotional, spiritual body is always trying to heal too. Mm -hmm. But we don't see it but it is happening because we are attracting the people, places, things, situations, circumstances to facilitate that healing always. Even as soon as that wound happened all throughout our lives and all throughout our lives, we say, ah, oh, I keep attracting this person. I don't know why I keep attracting these friends who like turn their back on me. They're just not good friends. Why do I keep doing this? Like I just have the worst luck, right? Mm -hmm. Story we tell ourselves when in reality we're blessed with this opportunity for this friend to trigger us, to show us, damn, well, I should have more self-worth. What is happening? When did my self-worth go out the window and I'm just choosing friends who just treat me like shit or girlfriends or boyfriends or partners, right? And it's showing us. And we have that opportunity to heal every single time. Now with conscious awareness, we go, whoa, this is, this is giving me an opportunity to heal. Just like my body's healing that wound, now I'm attracting someone to help me or mm -hmm. show me where the wound is so I can heal it myself, so I can heal myself. Mm. Powerful stuff, man. Very powerful. And, and once you make that connection, then the work begins mm -hmm. and it's not easy. And I'll be the first one to tell you this shit's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I still got shadows that I don't want to look at. Same. Right. Same. I'm sure there's way more shadows than I know of right. that are just dancing right behind me. And every time I look, yeah, yeah, it's behind right. me out of my line of sight, out of my scope of awareness. So. That's why there's shadows though, you know, and, and the relativity of a friend or a parent or a brother or sister or a lover, they shed light on that mm -hmm. really quick. That's relativity, right? Relativity can show you that which you are and that which you are not, mm -hmm. or choosing not to be or choosing to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the gift that it's so funny. Like, we don't need anyone to remember how powerful we are, right? Like, we, we, it's within us that touching that to know that. But we also need everyone to remember who we are because we need relativity to go, wait a minute, that person's a real dick. That's not me. I'm not a dick. I wanna be better than that person. I wanna be mm -hmm. show up better in the world. And that's a relativity that leads us to understanding who we are. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And you mentioned something earlier uh, about self-worth and, you know, just, I, I'm going to tie this in real quickly, but because um, you mentioned earlier also that maybe not on camera, but that you joined Gold's Gym mm -hmm. and you started to work out again yes. and you were really excited about going to the gym now and seeing yeah. all the spectacle that Gold's Gym it's is. It's a spectacle. Um, and I can look back honestly and, and just like share this reflection about myself that uh, whenever I first started training, I was doing it unconsciously from a place of low self-worth because I did feel insecure. I did not, I was not confident in myself. And I thought that if I were to build a physique that was, you know, worthy of admiration or at least my own admiration, that it would mask this self-worth wound that I had. And even when I got to a certain place of achieving that and to monumental degrees of it, it still never filled that void. And I can honestly say that like my time spent in bodybuilding was misguided or misdirected from what my intention was because right. I thought I was doing it from this place of wholeness, but it was coming from a place of scarcity mm -hmm. and how I felt about myself. So I would love to hear about your story and how you're getting more into, into training and, and why, mm -hmm. why this change now. Oh man. Yes. I love that question, man. This is good. Uh, when I was in, an undergrad and I started working out for me, it was really hard. Well, I want everyone to think about the culture where I'm from, right? Like central New Jersey, oh, Jersey yeah. shore, <laughs> right? At the time, this was like 2003, 2004, right? This was like, it was trendy, at least where I was to be huge. I'm not talking about like, just like fit, like 
massive. So gorillas, when yeah. gorillas, <laughs> yeah. right? You remember Jersey, Jersey Shore? Shore whoever, yeah, whoever you says it, gorillas are, are still like the, you still find them there. But like that was all my friends. And when we went, to, used to go to the clubs. I was always like the skinniest one. I was so far from accepting myself for what who I was or what the way my body presented itself right mm -hmm. my genetics the way they looked for me i was like wait i don't understand i work harder than these guys in the gym but i'm only getting like a little bit of weight per month and they're getting huge right so i took steroids i took steroids when i was a freshman in college and i got huge i was like 220 pounds and i was strong like finally i was putting up double plates and maxing out and i was like yeah i was i felt so good because i was getting the attention that I wasn't giving myself. Yeah, I was getting ego. The, ego the ego, yeah. the ego, the love, the adoration, right? The bros were coming up to me at the gym. They're like, bro, how'd you get so big, man? Like, what are you taking? I was like, ah, man, I'm just like eating a lot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, weren't, they weren't knowing my secret. The, the irony about something like that is as soon as you stop taking them, it like water just comes out of your body. And three months later, I was like back to me, you know? And I was left with like this person like, like I can't take steroids all my life. Like I, I actually didn't want to take them, but I was so like insecure at that point. And then I started needing to understand that my body first in a perfect timing, I learned about different body types, right? Mm -hmm. Not everyone has the same body build. Not everyone has the same bone density or, or whatever, but it was interesting to me because I was like, I started making amends and started loving my body for what it was. Right. Like tall, lanky, you know, it can be kind of fit, but like, I'm so happy with it at this point because and that took a lot that mm -hmm. took a lot right especially because like it's it's hard for me to put on muscle and you know really hard like i have to eat a lot i have to work out a lot but it just took so much for me to just be with okay with now how it is mm -hmm. and it took mirror work that was the number one thing back in around 2017 i started doing this mirror work and i used to stand there shirtless and i used to be like okay look at my muscles but then i used to bring like love to whatever however it looked Mm -hmm. at that very moment and it's powerful because now coming back into working out after like a year of not really doing it consistently it's so crazy i walked in the gold gym and gold gym was like the biggest gym that i've gone to in the past year and a half like the most populated it was like back being at the gym and i used to go so much when i was young and i remember the feeling i used to get when i was young i used to feel so insecure walking in immediately because all of a sudden everyone was really big right everyone was really fit and i would feel like I feel like I, would, I was being looked at, you know? It's a really terrible feeling. Like, I have to, like, walk properly. It just, I felt like every eye at All the gym was on, on me, yeah. even though no eyes were on me. Yeah. And even if there was an eye, it was probably for a second because they were back to being on their phone or watching TV. But I walked into Gold's gym, and it was, like, so crazy. Like, I felt nothing. I just felt so at peace and grounded with mm -hmm. my, own, my own vision of what I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. that was just get on the Stairmaster. You know, and it felt so good because I, it's relativity, right? You get to experience through that whole atmosphere of being at the gym where I'm at. And that gave me a good barometer of being like, yeah, you know what? I've made a lot of amends, a lot of love and peace with my body and how it is right now. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful because so many other people experience that, um, that gym phobia, yeah. of not wanting to go to the gym at, for the fear of being seen or judged or um, yeah, just judge of where they are, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I share this with my clients all the time too. You know, if you think that you going to the gym and, and that people are looking at you while you're training, like people go to the gym to look at themselves. Like, let's be real. Right. Like their eyes are in the mirror 99% of the time right. looking at themselves, flexing. And that's okay. You can totally do that while you train. I'm an advocate for it. You know, proper form. Great. Look in the mirror, admire yourself. That's beautiful. But don't go into the gym from a place of self-hatred and wanting to Fix yourself. You know, you, if you shift that to a place of feeling good, not like feeling good where you are, right. not only feeling good once you get that six pack, right? You know, once you look, you know, once you see that number on a scale, those are all great goals to have. But if you can learn how to feel good in the moment, if you can learn how to really love yourself and just be proud of the fact that you're in the gym working on yourself, then that total perspective shift will allow you to feel good in the moment. And then everything shifts. Yeah, everything. Everything shifts. Even, even, and it's, it's ironic because your body starts listening to you. Mm -hmm. Your body feels that change in frequency, right? And your body's more open to being like, yes, yes, I'm on board too. Because your body's conscious. Like, mm -hmm. I have been in a deep, deep meditation and I was like, am I having a full conversation with my body? Like, mm -hmm. my body's like its own entity that understands exactly, like, it's a full conversation. 
Your body's aware. But understand this. The stories in your head, that monkey mind, all of those egoic, like sponsoring thoughts that loop and loop and loop, almost every single person at the gym is having the same looping thought. Mm -hmm. Even if they're the best, it's hard to find a lot of people who are physically at their healthiest, but mentally, emotionally also just being like, no, I'm at peace. This is how my body is. I love my body. But if I gain 20 pounds in the, in the next five minutes, I'd also be happy. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find people who are that in peace. So understand, just like you have those stories, look around the gym. Almost every single person is having the same stories around their head, however they look, regardless of how they look. Mm -hmm. They are always going, even the best fit person is going to want to have another goal and then another goal and then another goal. Just understand that like being in that moment, like you said, Nima, and being so at peace with who you are and how you're showing up, it's the most beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, okay. So moving, moving on with this uh, fitness conversation, I would love to hear from your perspective as a naturopathic doctor that is into fitness mm -hmm. and training. What kind of supplements, if any, are you taking or would you suggest somebody mm. to take? Yes. Okay. Not a prescription. Yeah, not a prescription. Amazing Just stuff. Suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> we could do so as a vegan. Uh, I find the creatine uh, a lot of time is hard to consume. I use your creatine actually with the mushrooms, which is amazing formula because I've never seen creatine with mushrooms. So I take that and actually I do notice a difference. That's probably one of my major ones that I, that I know that really is helpful for, but I just look more swole to be honest. Dude. <laughs> like, my girlfriend doesn't think so because I'm like, I'm like, yo, remember me yesterday? My shoulders look different. And she's like, this they, shirt they, now? they look the same, Christian. I'm like, are you sure? Cause I'm like doing like bodybuilding pose. I'm like, look at this lat though. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy because in our heads, first like, day back, as already, guys, I know already flexing, doing the back. Bones. It's funny because I'm like, I'm like, no, you don't know. My body responds really quick. Watch, <laughs> but in reality, I I could see it through her eyes too. But the creatine has been really helpful for me. Studies uh, will show five to ten grams, right? Uh, and I believe right now the best way to take it is before or after, but I take it before and after because mm. I'm really like getting in there right now. Mm -hmm. Um. I take a pre-workout and this is really interesting. Um, I did a talk with the Clippers last year or three years, two years ago. And it was about getting the team off of dairy, right? Because for me, dairy is contraindicated for athletic performance and, and meat, especially right before there's re there's a lot of power in plants, um, but very specific ones. So anything that is like beets, which is amazing. You can eat cooked beets about an hour and a half or beet powder mm -hmm. right before uh, will be a vasodilator bringing blood to your muscles. I'm sure you know this, but also things that carry citrulline like watermelon. Mm -hmm. So I actually have, uh, I make a little drink. I have like this beet powder. I put a little creatine. I'll put um, some watermelon chunks in there. Um, and what else do I put? Oh, a little bit of matcha for the caffeine. Mm. And I mix that up and I put, oh, I actually put a, a drop of essential peppermint oil, right? Because that actually has been shown to increase respiratory capacity in soccer players. So they did a study on soccer players and they showed that just a one drop in like a liter of water, uh, peppermint oil is helpful for that lung function and uh, just aerobically to bring a lot more oxygen. So the game, name of the game for me is like, how do I open up my blood vessels before the gym, get blood to my legs, get blood to my body or my arms, uh, and also get that like boost of energy. So that's what I do. Like, mm. and maybe some cordyceps, which is really good, or rhodiola. Mm -hmm. Those two uh, mushroom and herb are really nice. So cordyceps, rhodiola, some peppermint, some watermelon, or maybe oranges or something like that, uh, or Concord grape juice, a little bit, matcha, and your creatine. Bro, I am ready to go. If, if like, I take that about an hour before workout, I get to my workout and I'm like, I'm buzzing. That's awesome. Yeah, so you have to time that a little bit more um, farther out. Right? Farther out. Just because it's a little bit of a slower effect, it's natural ingredients, mm -hmm. it's not like the really concentrated and I'll explode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where your head <laughs> explodes too at the same it, time. Tingling and shaking. I know. Yeah, it shouldn't yeah. be that way, but I do time it exactly because it takes <laughs> that like things in the body should like it should be a slow process, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, our body's not made to just be like, oh my god, what is going on? React, you know. Drugs, which which really helpful medications are really helpful for people who need it when they need it, especially emergent situations. But they push the physiology. They force the body to do something. Mm -hmm. These are natural substances where the body goes, ah, I got the signal. Here we go. Everyone ready? Open up the blood vessels, mm -hmm. right? Let's move that creatine. Let's move that anti-inflammatory effect in the body. It's really amazing stuff. Um, what about what about protein powders? I know you have a lot of opinions about protein yeah. powders. You've done several reviews. Um, why not 
whey protein mm-hmm. or casein protein? Mm-hmm. Why the plant-based proteins? Yes. Okay. That's uh. So so that's my after workout, right? I'll I'll do a protein powder and a little bit of creatine, and then I'll wait and then I'll eat. But see, most people aren't going to tolerate whey. Unfortunately, it's got a great amino acid profile, mm-hmm. right? But most people don't tolerate it. In 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 especially in the gut, man. People's microbiomes right now are so messed up as it is majority of people who take in whey, it, it destroys their gut. They're like, I, I can't. And it's because their microbiome is a mess and the whey is exacerbating it. So unfortunately, on top of that, majority of whey companies out there are so crappy, right? They're, they're sourcing from cows that are eating genetically modified, super inflammatory food. That's translating to the inflammatory profile of the dairy. They're creating the whey they're separating it from it, but it's coming from a really crappy source. Mm-hmm. And then they're going, well, let's make this Cinnabon flavor, you know, and they mm-hmm. add synthetic Cinnabon flavor on it, right? Like, what do you, your body's like so needing to repair and heal after workout, and you're giving your body more crap, mm-hmm. right? It'll use those amino acids, but it also is like, fuck, I'm inflamed. Like, what's going on? Like, I have amino acids, but I'm also inflamed. There's a, we got to put out this forest fire while we're building this amino acid house, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty crazy. So, um, I use yours. Yours has, when I did my protein powder review, it came up as like the, one of the best ones Yay. and the, mm-hmm. the, the openness that you, the transparency of it. The problem with plant-based protein powders is lead mm-hmm. and cadmium in particular. Those can be pretty high, especially if they're pea protein based. Um, but still a lot of protein powders can be heavy metal high with their heavy metals high. That's why I take yours. Cause you showed me the, you showed me the, the third party testing. It was fantastic. Like I was like, First of all, I crossed my fingers when I opened it. I was like, I really hope so this is I. really good. So I. I was like, I hope this I is really good. When I sent it to you. Yeah. And then when I, when I read it, I was like, yes. Like, I was pleasantly surprised because it was better than every. It was like, I was like, whoa, like, there's good ones out there. Like, this is the lowest I saw, especially in that batch, which is amazing stuff. So, um, yeah, I take that one in. The flavors are good. And, and it's like, it makes the protein powder, like, good because the flavors are good, right? I'm not using, like, a little teaspoon of it, right? There's, mm-hmm. there's enough powder where I'm like, oh, this has flavor. It's, like, chocolatey today, you know? And uh, we, made, we made it with, like, a, a frozen uh, banana. Yeah. And uh, what was the secret ingredient that you use, that powder? Oh, I use amla powder. Amla powder. Yeah. Amazing stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But that vitamin C is going to be helpful at rebuilding the muscle too, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, thank you for the kind words yeah. about veg. And, um coming from like a manufacturing perspective, you, you see the back end of what's going on in the supplement industry. So there's a lot of words that are thrown around like natural, organic, these even like in-house certifications for manufacturing Mm -hmm. facilities. And once you take a little bit closer look, you realize that they don't, it's just all smoke and mirrors. It's, it's uh, what is the word? Greenwashing. Yeah. Greenwashing. It's it's greenwash. Yeah. Where they, they trick consumers into thinking that the products that they're putting out are healthy because they put green labeling. They put a leaf. There's a lot of psychology that goes into labeling as well. Exactly. So I would love to hear your fact from, or your perspective from uh, all the research and work that you've done on, on, you know, going deeper into these labels and how to read them. How can you empower the consumer to know what to look for? Uh, when selecting supplements in particular, just because I, I want to stay in this lane yeah. for a minute, but I would love to hear uh, yeah, how for we sure. can do that. Yeah, so greenwashing is the word, and there's a lot of companies, even at Whole Foods, it'll be like eco-friendly, natural, a buzzword, which means absolutely nothing, right? Uh, it might say fragrance-free, which is great, but it has all of these other chemicals in it, right? So none of us are taught, and there should be a class in school or middle school or high school where we learn a little bit or college where we can learn how to read labels, even chemicals. Um, it's sort of loaded because it depends on the, like where you're going. Like, okay, so let's talk about food. USDA organic label. I'm still a big proponent of, I've always been a big proponent of, because at least it gives us a standard. It's far from perfect, but it gives us a standard to know that it's devoid of certain pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, chemicals, sewer sludge. doesn't say anything about heavy metals, but still, at least I have a standard, mm-hmm. right? Which is really, really important. There's a, there's people who still say that like dose makes the poison and that's such an antiquated way to, to see things, right? Cause how do you explain heavy metal poisoning then if that's the case, if, uh, if they tell me dose makes the poison with that belief, then we have a can of tuna and they go, well, the mercury in there is the dose is not going to be poisonous. So the dose makes the poison. But then if I eat tuna every single day, yeah. that mercury is building up. That's something more than the dose making the poison. That's bioaccumulation. It doesn't take it into account. 
still people are arguing for pesticides and herbicides and insecticides going, no, it's fine. It's, it's a small dose. A dose makes the poison. It's bullshit. It's always been bullshit. So that's why something like USDA organic label at least gives us that. But also when it comes to consumer goods, the EWG, really good, far from perfect, but it's really, it's a good source to know if before you buy it, let's say you're at Whole Foods and you go, oh, this looks like an interesting laundry detergent. Let me look at Environmental Working Group. Let me, t- let me type it in and see the letter grade, mm-hmm. right? And it'll tell you why the letter grade is a letter grade, which is important. And then you look at the one on top and you go, wait, let me check this one. And that one's an A. And you go, oh, at least you're empowered enough that you have a resource to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, is because it an app or just a website? Environmental Working Group, it's a website, but I okay. think they have a Think Dirty app. Mm-hmm. Um, the Think Dirty app is another one, but Clean uh, Skin Deep Database is the one on the EWG. Think Dirty app, something different. Uh, but it's the same idea. You can like scan the barcode on the Think Dirty okay. app. Beautiful. It, it's a work in progress, but man, it's better than anything we've ever had. So that's when it comes to greenwashing. Now, when it comes to things like supplements, that's hard. That's like the Wild West. Yeah. Amazon is a $6 billion counterfeit supplement platform. It, it's, the industry's massive. China and India are the leaders in giving us like really crappy supplements that are derived from coal, t- coal tar, sewer sludge genetically modified corn or yeast, like nasty stuff, stuff that you want to get better and healthier, but you're giving this to your body. Um, so for me, uh, you want to look at high quality ones. So Whole Foods, Air One, Pharmacas that we have out here, they tend to have pretty good, good quality ones. Um, you can go on the Pharmaca website, but even better, go to SwellScore. I have SwellScore mm-hmm. and that's what we're doing. Like we're mm-hmm. putting together our we're handpicking the best of the best of everything. And now we're moving even away from supplements and doing things for the home, right? So we're carrying now the water filters that I believe in and I'll relate to them and go, here's why. And they'll put up on the, on the store. So that's why we have the swell score, uh, the store, and it'll have everything, but that's, that's for supplements. There's no like regulatory body on supplements. Yeah. There's no like USDA. You can have a USDA organic supplement, but it could still like be really poor dosage. You know, there's so many factors. That's why we did the swell score. But, uh, yeah, greenwashing is nasty, man. It's mm-hmm. like crazy. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy. Just like pictures and buzzwords. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 a tough industry to be in too because it's so saturated with people that are just looking to make a dollar. And it's, you know, companies' intentions aren't always clear. And there's a lot, I mean, luckily lately, there's been a lot of changes with what you can put on labels, the claims that you can mm-hmm. make. They're getting a lot more strict on that, which is wonderful because that helps the consumer um, have realistic expectations, yeah. you know, like back in the day you used to be able to slap on a bottle. It says like lose 20 pounds and right. Remember week. those days? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now you can't make those claims, which is awesome, but that doesn't change the fact that there's still a lot of work that still needs to be done, but at least we're heading in towards that direction. Mm-hmm. Um, but move, moving away from supplements, I would love to hear more for like produce or things like that. Like what can we look for as a consumer for signs to select the right produce? I mean, right. like you hear it all the time, like, Organic, obviously you want to select organic, but is that significantly better than non-organic? What about frozen foods? Right. Good, 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 good question, man. The, okay. So, uh, organic food is nutritious. It's more nutritious than a conventional one that we know. The debate has been like, oh, but the, the chemicals, it won't affect you. It's at low dose, but I just talked about the dose makes mm-hmm. the poison. If you eat organic food, you're not going to feel it in the first day. But it's going to be one of those things over time where you're moving away from pesticide-laden food and you're going, oh, like it's a year later, like six months later. And you're like, I feel like I have more energy. I feel like I'm in the better mood, right? I feel like my gut is a lot better, right? It's those things that we want to stay away from, especially because we're inundated with so much crap as it is, right? Remember that pie chart? The stress, the environmental toxins, Mm -hmm. drinking every weekend, maybe smoking. An intervention that we could do is put our money that's where something is really valuable for us. Mm-hmm. Right. There's, I mean, I remember it's an investment. I, it's an I, investment. I, the reality is that these healthier products, um, at least some of them can be more expensive. Mm-hmm. So how can we speak to that? Because it is, I always say the same thing. It's a, your health is an investment. Like people yeah. are so willing to spend $12 on a beer, but not, you know, invest in the organic fruits and, and vegetables that they're consuming. Exactly. Go to a farmer's market, man. I was just at the Larchmont Farmers Market yesterday. I was like, "This is way cheaper than like where I get my produce." Sometimes, you know, it's like, and I and it, this is organic, but it's it's farmers who can't afford the USDA organic label at that mm-hmm. time. 
but they're having organic practices. But then if you don't trust them, right behind them, that's a USDA organic farmer right there. That's why you need to like support your local farmers because you're going to get things way more fresh. And also you're going to get things that are going to be way cheaper um, for the most part. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but also think like about buying in bulk, like you can buy like a bag of potatoes, organic potatoes, you know, and, and make them all like oven roast them and make them for the week. You know, that's, that's going to be really good bang for your buck. Um, just, just have a realistic expectation for me. I buy all of these fruits and vegetables and then I use maybe 60%. And I'm like, damn, you know, Mm -hmm. have a realistic expectation, go to farmer's market, um, get foods that should be like, that are better to be organic, like berries, cherries, kale, like the leafies, yeah, all the leafies. Like the dirty dozen. The dirty dozen, yeah. For the dirty yeah. Dozen, yeah, like just keep, keep your head in that. And that versus like a watermelon or a cantaloupe or an avocado or a pineapple, don't worry about those organic. So now you're saving, right, like a dollar, a dollar, a dollar if you buy all four. So think about those things. And then when it comes to like frozen stuff, they are, they, if, it, okay, first of all, like let's say you get organic blueberries, they should hold the nutritional value still because mm-hmm. they're flash frozen. And they're still fine. Like, especially like the wild organic ones. Those are really nice. Or the wild ones. Those are really nice ones. I don't know how that translates to like frozen leafy greens. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't like the taste of frozen leafy greens as it is, right? Like frozen spinach. It doesn't taste as good as like, you know, a box of spinach. But um, I, I don't know how those nutrients translate. I just know like for berries. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, man, it's an, inv- if you think about it as an investment, because I used to spend like $70 on alcohol every weekend when I was younger, right? What if I took 40 of those dollars and just got better quality food, mm-hmm. right? So think about those things, you know? And look, I think Trader Joe's can be a, have better quality food there, but they have really cheap produce, you know? And, and they have a lot of organic options. So go to Trader Joe's, you know? For me, even if you're not eating fruits or vegetables and you can't afford organic, getting conventional ones are still better than not eating them. Put mm-hmm. it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, better than better than not. Mm-hmm. Then better than standard American diet. Yeah, than processed food and, and processed food. Things with high fructose so, corn syrup and yeah, go yeah. slow, go slow. Again, investments don't have to be overnight, right? Like you can be like, all right, I'm gonna start eating more blueberries now, right? Oh, let me bring in more leafy greens. Let me change my shampoo. Let me change my conditioner. These are all things that happen. Give yourself a year. Give yourself two years to make these changes. These investments you'll start feeling better. I promise you. If something's not going away in your body, you'll start feeling better. Mental, emotional, you're moody, you'll start feeling better. You got to see your body as that beautiful vessel and give it like all of the goods that it needs to heal. Mm. Well, Christian, man, thank you so much, man. You, you're so knowledgeable, man. You're like this library of like all of these different <laughs> topics when it comes to like, you know, health and wellness and like spirituality and and shadow work and all of these things, man. I absolutely love Thank talking you, to you. I could talk to you all day. Appreciate uh, it. But unfortunately, we have to end it soon. Okay. And I just want to, for, for anybody listening, please go give this guy a follow. He posts so much educational content. Like he is doing work in the world to help people like you become healthier and empower you to really reclaim your mm-hmm. health and remember who you are, which exactly. is so important. So where can we find you? Yes. I'm going to put it all in the show notes, but where can we find you? Okay, yeah. So, uh, well, the podcast called Heal Thyself. You've been on it. We had a bomb episode. Everyone's got to go check that one out. We were like going in deep about everything. Uh, and then it's dr.christian.g-o-n-z-a-l-e-z-gonzalez. And um, yeah, I'm putting out a lot of content. Uh, I'm building up that TikTok a little bit too. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so you post in, the, in the grocery you'll store. You'll see it in the grocery store. Yeah. You won't see me dancing on there. You won't see me doing anything <laughs> cheesy. But you'll see me on TikTok. It's the same name, Dr. Christian Gonzalez. I've seen you dance. You could. You see me you dance, but the TikTok, the maybe I can make TikToks the TikTok. I, yeah, I got to get more creative, and I, maybe I got to be a little bit more authentic with my audience. I love that, man. I we'll love talk that. So, it. if you're listening, please give this guy a follow. If you found anything on this episode useful and you want to share it with your audience, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. We would greatly appreciate it, and I'm sure they would too. Um, be sure to tune in for more episodes, and sending you all love and light. Love and light. <laughs>